So in this video, we're going to be looking at equilibria that involve a solid dissolving in water. So when you put the solid salt inside the water, it'll start to dissolve. You know, the solid will start going away and breaking up into its ions. And as more and more ions form, you know, they'll build up and eventually there'll be enough ions in the solution to start the reverse reaction. You know, the ions will start to combine to reform the solid salt. And eventually, this process reaches equilibrium. And at this point, we say the solution is saturated with this solid. You know, no more is going to dissolve, and no more is going to reform. And so, we can write the equilibrium expression for the any solid salt dissolving. And since solids are not included in the equilibrium expression, you know, it'll just be the concentrations of these ions. And we write the equilibrium constant as Ksp, which is called the solubility product. So this Ksp tells you basically how soluble this salt is. If the Ksp is very high, you know, for example, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride dissolves basically completely in solution. So the Ksp of sodium chloride will be very, very high. You know, similar to how the Ka of hydrochloric acid is very, very high, since it's a strong acid. If the Ksp is very, very low, then that means the solid barely dissolves in water there will be much more undissolved solid than there will be ions when the equilibrium is reached. So let's say we have copper bromide and we know it has a solubility of 2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So what is the Ksp of this solid? So to do this all we do is set up an ice chart you know, like normal equilibrium problems. Now, of course, the concentration of the solid cannot change. So we have initially zero molar of these ions. And since they're all in a one-to-one -one ratio, the concentrations of these ions will increase by an amount x. And well, we know that amount from the solubility. You know, the solubility tells us how much of the solid will dissolve. And the reason it's usually written in moles per liters instead of molar, you know, because obviously the concentration of the solid cannot change. So we can't really say the concentration of CuBr decreases by 2 times 10 to the negative fourth. But what this really means is for every 1 liter of solution, 2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of copper bromide will dissolve into the ions. So you can think of the solubility as basically this x in the ice chart. So for every mole of copper bromide that dissolves, one mole of these ions are produced. So we know that the equilibrium concentrations of these ions will be equal to the solubility, 2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. And that's because they're all in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now you have to be careful if there are any coefficients. For example, in this thing here, with calcium fluoride, the fluoride has a coefficient of 2. So you know when you do the ice chart for this, it will be plus x here for the calcium and plus 2x for the fluorine ion. So that means whatever the solubility of calcium fluoride is, and the equilibrium concentration of the calcium ion will be equal to the solubility since it's just plus x. But since the fluorine is plus 2x, that means for every mole of this calcium fluoride that dissolves, two moles of fluorine ion will be produced. So the fluorine ion at the equilibrium will have a concentration of two times the solubility. So, you know, be careful for that. So, after, from now, we just write the Ksp, the equilibrium expression, 
plug in the values of the concentrations and solve. So as you can see, the KSP is very small. So not much of this copper bromide will dissolve in a solution. So sometimes we dissolve a solid inside a water solution that already contains an ion that the salt has. So in this case, the solubility of the salt will be reduced. And this is referred to as the common ion effect. So here we have calcium fluoride. And being dissolved in a solution of sodium fluoride. So as you can see, the common ion in this problem is the fluorine. Now when the calcium fluoride dissolves, it will produce the calcium ion and the fluorine ion. But there are very fluorine ions in the solution from this sodium fluorine. You know, sodium fluorine is totally soluble, so we can treat it as basically 0.025 molar sodium plus ions and 0.025 molar fluorine minus ions. So there's already fluorine in the solution when we add the solid. So now according to Le Chatelier's, if we increase the concentration of this, you know, it'll shift to the left, which is why the solubility of the solid will be reduced when there is a common ion. So again, we set up the ice chart. The only difference is that the initial concentration of one of the ions is not zero. So looking at the coefficients, this one will be plus x and this one will be plus 2x. So at equilibrium, we will have the calcium ions will have a concentration of x, which is equal to the solubility, while the fluorine ions will have 0.025, which is their initial concentration, plus 2 times the solubility. Again, because the coefficient is 2. So we write the equilibrium expression using the given value of Ksp. You know, make sure you remember the squared on the fluorine ion. And so plug it in. And again, since the Ksp is very small, we can use the 5% rule to ignore this 2x and approximate this as just 0.025 squared. So from there, we can easily solve for the solubility which, again, is just x. So as you can see, the solubility is very small, which is what we'd expect from a solid with a small Ksp. And furthermore, there is the common ion, which further reduces the solubility. So something else that can affect the solubility of a solid is the pH of the solution. And this occurs when one of the ions of the solid has acidic or basic properties. That, you know, because the ions will react based on the pH of the solution. You know, whether there's excess H plus in an acidic solution or excess hydroxide ion in a basic solution. For example, we have silver phosphate, which dissolves into Ag plus and phosphate ion. So Ag plus doesn't do anything, but we know that the phosphate ion can act as a base. So if this solid dissolves in an acidic solution, there will be extra H plus ions, which can react with this basic phosphate. So the H plus and the phosphate will react to form HPO4 2 minus. And that reaction decreases the concentration of phosphate because, you know, it's being used up in the reaction. So as we know from the Chateliers, if we decrease the concentration of phosphate, you know, this equilibrium will shift to the right. So in acidic solutions, silver phosphate will have a greater solubility because its phosphate ion will be consumed in a reaction with the excess protons in the solution. And so the equilibrium shifts to the right, and the solubility is increased.